Welcome back to The Throwdown. This episode is brought to you by Adam Rogers, who's not here, so I'm going to announce it for all of you. 10-minute AMRAP, 50 bar-facing burpees, 50 alternating dumbbell snatches, and in remaining time, AMRAP, wall balls. Training Tank Tank Throwdown number 29. Yeah! <laughs> it's very nerve-wracking. <laughs> uh, only they knew. Hey, hey, welcome to Throwdown. My name's Brandon Dorman. I'm Max Elhage. I'm Mia Gianelli. If you're new to this whoa, series. Whoa, 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 hold on. We got a new sentence oh, here. Brandon has not been able to memorize it yet, so we're gonna have a lovely whiteboard that he reads that <laughs> sentence off for you guys. I thought you were gonna say a lovely Mia that's going to hold the whiteboard. <laughs> you train hard to develop strength, endurance, and the skills required to participate in the sport of fitness, so make sure you are also training your ability to cope with mental and physical stressors of competing on game day. So that's why we provide you with a workout a demo, strategy, tips, movement standards, so you can practice competing as the skill that it is. I crushed that. Yeah, but this what week. about the design? It's the new week, right? Woo! Oh, block. yes. We are in the new training phase of the design. Week one, all of the throwdown workouts are actually Saturdays in the design, so if you want a training program where Friday and Monday doesn't interfere with that workout, that's the one. Also, for people that don't want a full training program with strength, endurance, and CrossFit, there's a TTT60 program on trainingthinktank.com. That's one Metcon-style workout per day that the Throwdown is also a part of. And TTT60 is free <coughs> and designed. You gotta pay us cash. Yeah. This week we have one of our on-site athletes, Shira, demoing the workout for us. So how are we gonna make fun of Mike this week? Well, I mean, he'd look at him right now, <laughs> swinging <laughs> like a monkey. Back and forth. Yeah, we don't need to. Just warm there it, it is. There's our weekly uh, <laughs> Mike make fun of starting point. All right, here's Shira starting the workout. Somebody want to give some background on Shira so people can have some like. Shira, she has competitive goals. Um, she's still developing her gymnastics movements and getting stronger in order to be able to compete at a higher level. So she did CrossFit for like a year in class setting and then probably a year now with one-on-one -on -one coaching. So That's somewhere a, like two to three years of experience. It's a great question for Becky. All Hopefully right. we just like <laughs> <that with> Shira. <laughs> it has been fun to watch her from afar, how much better she's gotten at her Olympic lifts, especially just watching her um, do her strength portions over here. And uh, watching the burpees, she's gotten so much better with her footwork and being able to pace, which is something I told her after the workout. And a quick note, there is no standard for the burpee this week. So None? It just Well, you have to face the bar, but you can step over any way that you would like. So wow. those that are watching this, just make sure you keep that in mind. You can step over it? You can step oh, over man, the bar. Oh man, I'm kind of upset I didn't do it. This week. <laughs> Matt, I've tried just yeah. walking over the yeah. bar the entire that time. That six inch jump is my least favorite part <laughs> of any burpee. I think it's more than six inches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, let's give some uh, practical advice for these fine viewers. Mia, <laughs> educate them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a 50 burpee buy-in, you want to find a balance between, you can't go slow because it's a 10 minute cap, right? So you can't eat up too much time, you have a lot of work to do to get to the wall balls, but you don't want to go too big or too fast and be blown up by the time you get to the heavier dumbbell snatches. It's like two and a half seconds a rep is like a really fast burpee and four seconds in this format would be relatively slow. So yeah. it means you know you're gonna be somewhere just over two minutes, and then four seconds would be 200 seconds, which would be like three minutes and 20 seconds. Right. So you're gonna be somewhere in between there. That doesn't seem like a lot, a minute and 20 seconds, but a minute and 20 seconds when your score is max wall balls is an additional 40 wall balls yeah. in the workout. So this is a major separator in the workout, but I think a lot of it is just gonna have to be dictated by like what your confidence is to get to the dumbbell, which is pretty heavy, and be able to move it. So you can see like Jordan's in the background. He's already off the burpees and Shira's still in them just working away, which means Jordan flew on the burpees, but as a result, he's having to do singles there. So there's gonna be a give and take with regards to what type of a speed you can pick for this. Yeah, it really depends on how high of an effort a bar facing burpee is for you. So someone that's really good at them and knows that the dumbbell 
though it may be a little bit heavier than we're used to, is still, they're capable of doing that, then you can pick up your pace a little bit and do that more like kind of two and a half to three seconds per rep. Yeah. If you know that the dumbbell is going to really eat you up, then it's not like, hey, I'm gonna bank a bunch of time on the burpees because it could redline you and then the dumbbells become a huge issue for you. Yeah. So you gotta kind of play that game of like, how good, I, how good am I at the other movements that are coming up? All right, so she just finished. The uh, the other thing to consider too is maybe splitting the strategy on the burpees where you do like some fast, some slow, some fast, some slow, because you can definitely save a lot of time by doing that. Yeah, I actually like that strategy a lot. So it's like 10 at a two and a half second pace where basically you're just moving as quickly as you can and then 10 slow, go back and forth and you finish with 10 slow to recover for the dumbbell. So I couldn't get a word in while she was still doing burpees, but <laughs> at the end she, <laughs> Her footwork looked exactly the same as it did at the beginning, which is a really impressive thing. Um, when you're doing a big set, I think that's a good focus to put on because it takes your mind away from, oh, I have so many left to just, I just need to hit my feet in this spot the exact same every time and just cruise through it, stay efficient on it. Did we have any standard about the arm touching the opposite, like the opposite non-working arm touching? She's not doing it, but just for people, like the elbow on the leg. We did not mention it. it when we did the announcement of the workout, but I believe Adam did not want any assistance on the opposite leg. Okay, so we'll, do, we'll show that in the movement demos if she got away with some here. Um, I think just as a general rule of thumb, people should practice not doing that, because I know when they first put that standard out, it was really hard for people to uncondition posting their hand, their opposite hand on their leg as they're pulling up. It just kind of helps stabilize the back. Um, this seems pretty heavy for Shira. I think she's chunking them out in sets of five. Uh, little things I think technically people can do. Like she can probably drop her butt, especially since she's doing singles. She's not going touch and go, which generally will like force you to hinge a little bit more. She could probably drop her butt a little bit and get herself in more of like a, traditional deadlift style startup, which I think would probably take a little bit of pressure off the back. When you have the hinge of the burpee and the jump over and then a hinge like this, and then you're gonna be in that like hyper extended looking up position of wall balls, I think a lot of people are gonna probably experience their lower back getting tight as a limiter in this workout. So just thinking about getting that warmed up and maintaining that technique for some people, they're gonna have to do these like singles like she's doing them mm -hmm. in like quick chunks, but if you're strong enough, switching them in the air would definitely be beneficial for time savings. And when she's on her right arm, she does a dip under, and she doesn't on her left, which is interesting, but I think that dip under saves a lot. It's small, but uh, she did it on that one. Um, helps with, with not having to press out the dumbbell at the top if it is heavy for you. Yeah, she mentioned to me before the workout, I was just asking how she was gonna pace. She said the dumbbell was going to be the hardest part of the workout. It's uh, 50 pounds is, is pretty heavy for her. And she came up with a strategy. She mm -hmm. stuck to it the entire time. She basically had a plan in place of how many she was gonna do each set. And then she was trying to stay on a clock for her rest breaks, which I think she did a pretty good job of. My favorite part of Shira's doing this workout was her nodding her head yes at people <laughs> yelling at her, just <laughs> acknowledging yes, yes I, I understand I'm trying to go fast. <laughs> It's, it's such a double-edged sword when people are yelling at you. You're like, yeah. thanks for the encouragement. Yeah, you're like, no, like, please I stop know. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurting. I'm really trying I'm hard. <laughs> Mia, have you counted? No. Mm. <laughs> that was your one job. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Don't tell people lies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, she's got to be coming down to the home stretch here. Yeah, I think, I think Ryan just said 45 there. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, I know she does get a uh, slam the dumbbell no rep and have to come back mm, from John. Yeah, don't slam the dumbbells. <laughs> oh, I yeah. hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. Don't do it, everyone out there. Yep. Great finish here. 49. You can tell she's fighting. Yeah. And then she ghost nip, ride it. Nip, John, nip. John's in here somewhere coming and yelling at her <laughs> and she comes back and does one more. She's got a good attitude yeah. about it though. Sets it down nicely. Yeah. <laughs> good rep. All right, so what we could fix here is a chalk break into wall balls, probably not necessary. <laughs> what I would say for my athletes is you hit that last dumbbell transition quickly and get a first set in, even if it's not that big. Um, just switch gears over into the wall balls, and I think that's going to help take away that 
uh, transition time just a little bit. Yeah, I think a lot of times people think, see like AMRAP wall balls and let's say they have like three minutes or you know two minutes to do wall balls. They think they gotta do this in big sets. But if you're gonna get somewhere between 50 and 100, you can do sets of five or yep. 10. It's just gonna be about the discipline of the rest. Like she did a set here. Now this is, is where over time an athlete needs to improve themselves to make these rest times shorter. Because every 10 seconds is another four to five wall balls that you're missing out on. So it's literally about management of rest time, I think, more than it is about like getting on there and hitting a big set. Yeah, the big picture for, the, for CrossFit in general is movement speed. So how fast you can do the rep for whatever the movement is, that, that's the task for that day. And then the total rest time, yeah. right? So it's not about how many rest breaks you take, it's about the total amount of rest that you have in this setting. So for someone that's like, hey, I'm gonna try to do 30 or 40, but then they rest for 20 seconds, that's gonna be much slower than someone that does sets of 10 and only rests for three or four seconds after each set of 10. Yeah, I'd say that you're probably only looking at doing sets of like big sets if you're going over 100 reps on right. this workout. So when you show the scores and to go over 100 reps, yep, if you yep, just yep, think yep, 100 yep, wall balls yep. in and of itself is gonna take three and a half minutes. So that right. means you have to be able to do 50 bar facing burpees and 50 heavy dumbbell snatches in in uh, six, six and, and, and a half minutes. minutes and then be able to do unbroken wall balls. So it's really right. more like six minutes if you have rest time. So there's not that many people are the, gonna have the capacity to do big sets. I yeah, think it, thinking somewhere like, you know, 20 would probably be the biggest set that the, the bell curve of people is gonna be able to hit in the workout this format. Another slight time saver you can use is, you'll notice she picks up the wall ball, holds it, takes a breath and then squats down. You can. Depending on um, the workout, and this one I don't think it was a standard that you couldn't do it, in the open you can do it, um, you can just squat down and pick up the ball and throw it and that's going to save time yeah. over a lot of sets. Yeah, make sure you check standards because there was a qualifier, I think it was maybe Waterpoo's individual where you had to stand up all the way before yeah. you could throw it. Yeah, it's not like a med no, ball no, clean, no. it's like you get into the bottom of a squat and just bicep curl it up and then squat up and get your rhythm from the bottom. It does save every single rep, it saves some time. Yep. All right, there's done. the end of the workout. You see our friends in the back have got into the submissive death posture. <laughs> Good job, Shira. <laughs> Thanks for demoing. All right, you just watched Shira go. We wanted to give you top scores for our onside athletes. Shira got 54. Anzi was at 36, Shannon got 16 wall balls. On the male side, Kyle B with 141, that's a huge score. Luke got 100 and Mike came in at third, 98. So what we wanna do is go over a couple movement variations. We're gonna start with the wall ball and then we'll work our way to the dumbbell snatch. Mia's just gonna demo a couple normal wall balls here. So if she's just doing them at a normal pace, you can kinda of see a, a smooth squat speed. She's tossing it up, making sure she's hitting the, the, uh, the target each time. A couple ways that you can speed these up, especially when it's an AMRAP setting. The first one, widening your feet out so your squat depth is a little bit higher, but you're still obviously below parallel, but it speeds up the overall cadence. The next one is when you toss the ball, throwing it a little bit more aggressively so it's almost on a straight line. So you'll notice that it's more of a straight line up and down. Her squat depth's a little bit higher, but again, she's still getting below parallel. And then the last one is catching it actually on the way down. So instead of catching it where you're standing all the way up, she's on her way back down and then throwing it back up. The difference in wall ball speed here is like two seconds per rep for a normal wall ball and probably about 1.6, 1.7 seconds per rep, which over the course of five minutes is a huge difference in your overall score. We know that dumbbell is a little bit heavier this week, so the first thing that we can do is widening our feet out just like on the wall ball. What this will do is shorten the range of motion and speed up the reps when it's talking about over the course of 50 total reps. There's kind of two options here. If it's super heavy, you can do singles. If you're good at touch and going these reps, you can switch overhead. So she'll demo a couple switching overhead with a slight dip. You'll notice Mia's dropping her butt, dropping her hips as she gets through it, and then she's switching overhead. If the standard's switching below, you would just practice that in a warm-up setting. For the singles, what we would recommend is doing fast cluster sets while you stay down. So Mia will demo a couple of those. She does one, she's just bringing it down with that same arm, but as she's down there, she's picking up the dumbbell quickly and moving into the next rep. And again, doing sets of four, five, six, whatever it may be, then stepping away, breathing, and then getting back to the next set. So the movement standards are pretty straightforward this week. Three common movements. For the burpee though, you do not have to jump with two feet. So you can jump over the bar anyway as long as you're facing the bar and your chest touches the ground. For the dumbbell snatch, both heads have to touch the ground and you just have to be at extension overhead. You can switch anywhere that you'd like. And then for the wall ball, standard wall ball, hip crease below knee, make sure that you hit your target at 10 or nine feet. Let's break this workout down. All right, so. Burpees, starts with 50, 
find a pace that's manageable for you. You don't want to go too slow, but you don't want to blow up before the snatches. I recommend taking some time before and figuring out your footwork and focus on hitting that footwork every rep because that's going to keep you crisp. Yeah, I think also with it, <laughs> while also thinking about your footwork, you can also think about an alternative strategy for getting over the bar because if there's not a two-footed jump standard, there might be a more efficient one-footed jump or yeah. a step over for people that it can allow them to keep working. And also time some of your burpees in the beginning to figure out do you want to practice doing five sprint burpees, five slow burpees, and see if that actually nets you a faster time to finish with a little bit less fatigue. So there's like a lot of individual strategy that can go into the burpees. For sure, and knowing how good you are at burpees and how much effort it takes per rep for you. Like knowing that, hey, I can go fast on these and be okay for the dumbbell snatch, or if you're somebody that says the dumbbell snatch is gonna chew me up, I can't be redlined getting there, then you're gonna have to pace them a little bit more. Yeah, so that moves you into the dumbbell snatch. Almost everybody after 50 burpees is gonna be pretty high heart rate, some pressing musculature limitation, which is gonna make the lockout portion of the dumbbell snatch at that weight gonna put that under stress. So if you can touch and go those reps and transition in front of your face, overhead, that's gonna make a huge difference in your overall time. And it's also a little bit easier, like maybe yep. you take advantage of the just the stretch cycle of going down and just coming back up off the ground and not having to start dead stop at the bottom. If you do have to start dead stop at the bottom, any strategies or tips for people getting through that 50 pretty quick in, in single format? Yeah, I really like getting back down to the ground and doing smaller sets. So even if it's singles, you saw Shira did a great job of this. She'd come, she'd drop the dumbbell and then go right into her other hand. So it was like almost like a quick switch, switch, but on the ground. Whereas some people were doing one standing up, coming back down. That just takes too much time. Yeah, so it's almost like clustering the clustering sure. the work. So do sets of five fast singles, then take your break, right. and then go through it. You can also play around with where you set your feet. If you widen your feet a little bit more, decrease your range of motion. Um, you can also work on dipping under the snatch just a little bit to help save that lockout. I think that that's really beneficial even if you are strong at that movement. Yeah, and so then you finish with the wall balls, and I think when people look at this, they think AMRAP, and they're like, I gotta do big sets. One of the things that you can look at is saying, how can I manage my rest time a little bit better instead of just doing big sets? The way that I look at this is movement speed matters and then total rest time matters. So when we're looking at movement speed, can I spread my feet out a little bit wider? Can I catch the ball in the bottom of the squat? Can I throw the ball a little bit harder? Obviously, oh, there's a caveat there of like, how much effort am I putting into changing yeah. my speed on all of those things? But the faster you do them, obviously, the more reps you can get done. And then breaking up your set so that your rest time, your total rest time is less. So maybe it's 10, three seconds rest, 10, three seconds rest, all the way through. Yeah, and Mia pointed out with Shira's demo that she took a long transition break and she got chalk in there, but m most people didn't get chalk, but that rest time is probably the biggest rest time that people are taking. So if you can think, hustle from the dumbbell snatch into your first set of wall balls, get a couple in under your belt, change the movement pattern, get your brain ready for wall balls, and then take your first break, and then think of it like you have the throttle down for the rest of the workout, trying to go as fast as you can to get as many wall balls as possible. And also work on um, picking that ball up in the bottom of the squat, save you a few seconds on every transition. For sure. All right, the real question is, what will the best score be, male and female? Because this one, it could go a little bit higher than 100. I know you said 100 is gonna be like pretty tough to beat. Kyle but. Bernier got, what, 141? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I'd be I think 150 is yeah. going to be, some, uh, that, that's the threshold, but someone can get that. Bonus surprise! Tag us in a video with your best score the highest score we get, we'll send a TTT sticker pack. Sticker Woo! pack. Woo! <laughs> I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> Me and Max are gonna do the workout now. Shut your sarcasm <laughs> down. <laughs> Good luck on the workout. Thanks for watching. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Your boy Project Pata in this thing, man. Hey, look, man. Thank y'all for watching. Train Think Tank YouTube channel. Y'all hit that motherfucking subscribe button. You know what I'm saying? So y'all go ahead, man. Thank y'all for watching the channel. You know what I'm saying? Hit that motherfucking subscribe button, let it be known, let it be known, let it be known, you know what I'm saying? Hot talk.